Hi, Paul. Hi, Glenn. How are you? Cool. Uh, look, good. I'm good, and I'm really impressed to see the uh, the, the ultra capacitor batteries here. Yep. Um, tell me about them. Okay, so this is a battery we designed and built in Melbourne. Yep. And um, it's made using some cells that we source from overseas, but everything else we assemble and make here. So all the batteries are connected using these heavy-duty copper conductors. This so, is 400 so millimeters squared. So from the cell upwards, you make. Yep. Wow. And then if we want to join two cells together, we put a, one of these wires on, which is a 400 mil squared piece of copper. And the balancing wire goes through the middle there, through the hole. So no terminals? You don't have to, no terminals have to crimp the thing? This, this becomes the last terminal on okay. the battery, and then that goes off to your isolator. Yep. So the batteries are unique because they can charge in as little as six minutes and six, empty in six minutes. Six minutes? Yep. What's the C rating then? A 10C. 10C. And it can burst for um, 10 seconds at 20C. Wow. So that's a three minute rate. So, what do you see the application of the uh, UCB? Um, well, one of the big features is the design life. Yep. So, the design life of the cell is 30 years plus, yep. um, and that's 35,000 charge cycles, yep. and we're still 90% retention at the end of that time. So, they don't really age. So, that's, I mean, you buy one battery and you don't have to keep replacing it. Yep. Yeah, it does cost more than lithium ion batteries, yep. uh, traditional lithium ion batteries, and it costs much more than lead. Yep. But on a cost of energy basis, it's cheaper. So I, I noticed you, on your data sheets, 25 to 35,000 cycles. Yeah. Wow. You'll never buy another battery. No, you shouldn't have to. <laughs> yeah. uh, the operating temperature is negative 50 to 60. Ah, oh, mm. okay. So for charging? For charging and discharging? You can charge at negative temperatures? Yep. Negative 50 to 60. Is there a restriction on the charge rate? No. Nope. No? No. Nope. Because this is a big discussion point at the moment about some of the lithium battery systems are having trouble charging oh, okay, at cold it's temperature. Cold. Okay, I didn't know that. And uh, you know, because I live in a cold place, I notice it. Yep. Um, we're seeing them throttling at low as 10 degrees, they're starting to throttle. Okay. So these won't throttle under cold temperatures? No. Nope. No, and but to keep the, the 35,000 charge cycle life, we recommend you try and keep the batteries um, below 25 degrees Celsius. Yep. But even at 55 degrees Celsius, they will do uh, more than 6,000 cycles. If you, 55? If you sit them at 55 continuously. Yes, oh, that's pretty unusual. So it's really abusing it. But, really abusing. Uh, but yeah, yeah, if it occasionally goes over 50 to 55, 60, yep. it's not really going to shorten the life much. So uh, you've got them on a rack mount here. They can be in any orientation? Yeah, they can lie down flat. You fly? Well, yeah. this is on just a standard Bunnings rack, which is quite inexpensive. Wow. Okay. Um, and you can put, stand them up. Um, because they're the same shape as a lead acid battery. Yep. So you can replace them in the existing lead acid battery boxes in the field. Uh, each module is 2.2 kilowatt hours, and that's usable 2.2. .2. Okay, so 2.2 .2 kilowatt hours uh, yep. per module, and they come in different voltage options. Yeah, there's a, the highest voltage is 27.6, there's 18.4, 13.8, 9.2, 6.9, 4.3, and 2.3. Okay. And then as you series them up, you go up in voltage and you get up in energy. So, so series got, in parallel. You've got an incredibly flexible range of options. Yeah, you can go up to 800 volts. So there's a 800 volt, 800 amp DC fuse in here. Yep. So um, I can show you a load test here if you like. On this little multimeter here. Yep. There's a current clamp. You can see that, all right. Yep. So I've got a, a handful of quartz halogen globes on the end of the stand. Yeah, I'll just flick it on. Whoa. <laughs> so that's that's running at 500 and something amps. There. Of how many batteries? One battery. One battery? One battery is doing that. Just yeah. this one battery This here. one here, yeah. Oh my god. And that's a 13.8 volt one. So 13.8. 500 amps coming out of that? Yep. So 520 amps by 13.8 volts is about six and a half kilowatts. Okay. So yeah. that'll empty that in about 20 minutes or so. Right. Cool. And you can recharge it in as little as six minutes. You can. You're better to charge it a little bit longer, like maybe half an hour. Yeah. Not many people have a charger that can charge at 500 Well, because it also you get a bit of heat. Because the internal resistance of all the conductors, they'll make a bit of heat and you want to keep it cool. So yeah. it's better to charge it a little bit slower. But it can charge fast and discharge fast. Great. So uh, is there a special communication protocol to work with some inverters and not others? Not really needed because the batteries talk amongst themselves to try and get the cell voltages the same. So it's a, it's a self-managed battery? Yep. yep. Um, but there is a, a cable that comes out the end. Looks a bit like this here. Yep. Um, which plugs into a little um, PCB. Yep. And that PCB monitors if any cell is high in the whole network, yep. and then it reports back with a close contact 
to an inverter to tell it stop charging. So you can get you can use these as a lead acid replacement. Yep. Let's call it a dumb battery. Yep. With self managed safety built in. Yep. Or you can connect it through comm system to a uh, an inverter and get reporting on state of charge. Yeah. And you, you, and you, are, and you are recommended to connect it to an inverter to tell it to stop charging. Yeah. Especially if you're charging really hard right up to the last minute because yep. the balancer can only correct it at a certain rate. Uh, okay. So if you're charging really fast to the top level and the balancer can't keep up with one cell that might have been a bit high, yep. it starts to get high really quickly when it gets full. Yep. So you want to know about that. And then tell the inverter stop charging, let the balancing catch up. That's really only at the last 99% point. So is this just a, a simple digital signal like stop? Yeah, it's closed contact. Closed contact. So it's not yep. like a CAN bus communication protocol no. that can take you years to get integration with? No integration. As long okay. as you've got an input that says stop charging, so you I think most inverter inverters with a it. Please stop. Okay. Please stop inverter, yeah. Wow. Okay. And there's also a, a cell electronic um, cable that comes off that box, yes. which gives more information to the inverter, like yep. it goes into the analog port, yep. and that lets us measure the voltage of the high cell and plot it on the graph using the Emacs. Gotcha. So you can see that see how often this happens. Yeah. Cool. So it may not, may not ever happen really, but it could happen. Okay. Yeah. So um, UCB, ultra capacitor battery. Yep. Um, model half, sort of half capacitor, half battery, we call yep. it. Yep. And, and you're giving them some special yeah, names? Yeah, UCB 27.6. So based on the, the voltage? 2.2K. Gotcha. UCB 13.8, 2.2K. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.